With the first question, regarding the spectacle correction of Afikia, which one of the following statements is most likely to be true? A ring scotoma is due to prismatic effect of the Afikic lenses, or, or it produces barrel distortion, or objects appear further away than they really are, or the relative spectacle magnification <coughs> is 2.5. So what will be your right answer? Yes, so the right answer is a ring scotoma occurs due to prismatic effect of the ethical lenses. The, the prismatic effect can produce many problems. One of them is the ring scotoma. The barrel distortion is caused by uh, the prismatic effect of high myopic lenses or minus lenses. Objects appear closer than they really are with the ethical lenses, and the relative spectacle magnification is 1.3 only. So the explanation that we said before in the in the lectures is that the, the, the those who have a fake and look through the periphery of the lens, when there is an object appear at the periphery, it will undergo prismatic deviation. It will undergo the, due to the prismatic effect of the lens periphery, the the object uh, images or the rays will deviate toward the base, causing the object or the image to appear more displaced toward the apex. So when the patient moves his eyes to, to look at it, the, the light rays coming from it will undergo more deviation causing it to disappear. This is called the jack-in-the-box phenomenon since the object started to appear and disappear. The optical problems with spectacle correction, one of them is the magnification, as the relative spectacle magnification is 1.3. This is one of the problematic uh, effects of the spectacles, but it sometimes it can show a, a advantage in the patient with the patient looking at near target or looking at targets because they appear more large, so that they appear closer than they really are, as if the patient is looking through a magnifying loop or looking through a magnifying lens. It will produce a smaller image than the object, but since that it is closer to the eye, it will stimulate larger number of photoreceptors, causing more larger image. A second effect by the, the, the prismatic effect of the lens of the aphecia is that it can cause image distortion. This image distortion can be in the form of a pincushion effect here, while the, that of the high myopic lenses can cause uh, distortion of the barrel shape so this is the that of myopia and this is that of the hypermetropia okay let's move to the next question regarding axial myopia which one of the following statements is most likely to be true it increases with age or it is secondary change in keratoconus or it's corrected by concave lens or the secondary principal focus is behind the retina so take a, take a few seconds to think. Yes, I think that you all got it right. So it increases with the age, but up to limit. So it doesn't increase for lifelong, but to, to a certain age. And it is secondary change to keratoconus. This is wrong. It will be the refractive myopia will be the secondary change in keratoconus. It is corrected by concave lens, yes, this is true. And the second principal focus is behind the retina in case of hypermetropia, not in myopia. So myopia, as we mentioned before, can be classified as axial myopia or refractive myopia. Axial myopia due to increase the axial length, while refractive myopia can be either curvature myopia as in keratoconus due to increase ref increased curvature of ocular media, or index myopia as in, as in increase in refractive index as with nuclear sclerosis. The axial myopia can be classified into different types, but all of them can stop at a certain year. For example, the simple myopia will stop at 25 year old, while the degenerative myopia will stop at 35 year old. For myopia, the F2, when it is the F2 on, is on the retina, then the punctum remotum will be in front of the eye. This is uh, in contrary to hypermetropia, where the uh, F2, when the F2 is on the retina, the, uh, the punctum remotum will be the behind the eye. A third question is about the electromagnetic spectrum. Which one of the following statements is most likely to be true? Blue-green is longer wavelength part of the visible spectrum, 
or light in the infrared spectrum is blocked by the cornea and the sclera. The 315 to 400 nanometer part of the spectrum is absorbed by the crystalline lens, or the visible range is between 500 nanometer and 760 nanometer. So the correct answer is C. So why other options are wrong? The blue-green uh, spectrum of the or blue-green waves are the, uh, the shorter spectrum of the visible spectrum or blue-green are shorter wavelength in contrary to red and light is in the infrared spectrum is not blocked by sclera and cornea as they are absorbed by the cornea causing it, it to reach the lens and to reach the retina causing a famous problem called solar retinopathy. So we, we, why we are advised to avoid lo looking to the sun during eclipse? To avoid exposure to infrared rays which can penetrate through the cornea and the ocular media leading to reaching the retina causing a foveal burn. The 350 to 400 nanometer part of the spectrum is absorbed by the crystalline lens. This is true and this is the range of ultraviolet A uh, radiation. The visible range between 500 and 5, 760 nanometer, this is wrong, and because 500 is uh, within the green blue range, but this is not correct. So, as we mentioned before, that the visible spectrum is ranging from the blue light, which is have which have a wavelength of 380, to the red light, which have wavelength of 750. So, this is called the uh, the visible spectrum. As we move from the red to the blue, there will be decreasing wavelength and increasing energy and frequency. This is very important. There are different absorbing, absorbing characters or blocking characters of the ocular tissue to different waves of the, uh, of the visible and invisible spectrum. For example, the ultraviolet rays C and B and C and B of the infrared rays are both are absorbed by the cornea and the sclera. As it's the ultraviolet rays when absorbed by the cornea, it can cause this uh, famous photo of or famous clinical picture of photothermic keratitis. The lens can absorb the ultraviolet A rays, which can be attributed sometimes to be one of the responsible mechanisms for cataract formation. And finally, the retina absorb the ultraviolet A, or the ultraviolet A can reach in some amounts to the retina and the, all the range of infrared rays can pass through different ocular media to reach the retina which can cause this uh, solar maculopathy or solar retinopathy. You can see that the visible spectrum can pass through the ocular media to reach the retina. The ultraviolet A can pass through the cornea and lens. It's mostly uh, blocked by the lens or it is absorbed by the lens. Some very minimal amount reach the retina while the ultraviolet B is blocked by the cornea. So this is the, the ultraviolet B which is responsible for the photothermic keratitis. Ultraviolet A can cause a bluish discoloration of the images when after cataract extraction and IOL implantation if the IOL doesn't have UV filter because the protective effect of the lens against the ultraviolet A is no longer present. So this is from Elkington can show the different uh, ultra uh, different uh, range the range of ultra uh, of, of wavelength of different waves. So you can see that the ultraviolet A has a range of 315 to 400 nanometer, and the cornea and sclera absorb the ultraviolet C and the ultraviolet B, infrared B and infrared C. The crystalline lens absorb the ultraviolet A and the visible light uh, or the infrared between 400 to uh, 1400 nanometer pass through the ocular media to fall on the retina which can sometimes call thermal retinal damage. Let's move to the next question about polarization of light. Which one of the following statements is most likely to be true? A polarizing substance makes all instant light vibrate in the same plane, or it occurs when the light passes through a narrow opening, or light may be polarized on reflection from a plane surface. When polarized,